car. Uh, that extra gear, that first three steps. Huge strides in the performance. That I might not be the player I am today. All right, welcome to another episode of Behind the Gear. And we got uh, my buddy Kevin Galerno back on and just kind of chat. Kev, I, yeah, obviously, we all have a lot of time on our hands right now. And um, anytime I get an opportunity to get someone on a Zoom call, I'm, I'm all over it. So just uh, kind of a couple things I want to touch on with you today. But obviously, what are we doing right now to keep busy with this whole COVID and coronavirus going on and, and how much it's impacted everyone's life, obviously? Um, I want to talk a little bit about the uh, little challenge that you and I did. But, uh, thank you very much for bringing that up, for bringing that to me. <laughs> yeah. And I uh, also want to talk a little bit about the OHL draft and just some of the kids that we saw get drafted over the last weekend. Um, and yeah, just some of our thoughts on, on some of those kids as well. So first of all, how, how is everything going with you? Good, man. It's good to see you. Yeah. I know we, we talk a fair bit, but don't get to actually yeah. see you that much. So yeah. that's, uh, uh, it's good. Uh, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. Everything's, everything's good here, man. It's well, everything's as good as it can be. Probably the same as you. Yeah. Are you going stir crazy? Cause I know you're a bit of a busy guy who likes to like even putter around and get going and get and do an errands, things like that. Uh, Is it a little frustrating I, I, with that? I go through, I, I don't know if you do this too. I go through like waves, but like, like, Oh, this is not, this is, this is kind of nice, but like, Oh yeah, let's hang out. And then, you know, maybe go whatever it is, maybe it's eight hours or 12 hours or two days. And then, and then you're just like, I got to do something. I got to go for a run. I got to get out of the house. And you go through like a, like even like the challenge that we did, you know, it was 24 hours long and you're like, I, that's why I did it. Cause I was like, I got to do something, even though it only lasted 24 hours. It felt, it felt like it was a week. Yeah. So yeah. that helps. But, uh, and then, uh, you know, I just, I kind of go on through waves and then yeah. some of them are like mentally where you're just like, this is unbelievable. I can't believe this. This is the, we have the smartest, most information and technology, smartest people probably of all time. You know what I mean? Most information. And how is this happening in the world right now? And and then other times where you're just like, I, I got to work and whatever. I, it's I, I'm going through waves. Like I don't, I don't know. It's hard. Never had to handle anything like this before. Like no, never had to go through it. So it's and it's, it's uh, yeah. And I totally agree with you. I think it's definitely like a mentally it's just like it's a roller coaster because there are days where like i don't do anything and then i feel like crap that night i'm like holy man i just wasted a day but i've got to yeah. win another 15 in a row for sure that i'm gonna have that are gonna yeah. be the same day so you're like i'll do it tomorrow i'll get to it tomorrow i hope because having this much time on your hands too though you almost it's a it's a pull between like yeah just chilling out hanging with your family doing that but then also like maybe we should be learning new things maybe we should be getting chores done around the house you know doing that ripping your basement apart that you've been wanted to do for three years. And so there's all like, I don't know, you get torn between a lot of different things that are going on and like, what yeah. should you do? What shouldn't you do? But I think, and it's, it's, an, it's, an, it's amazing to see how poorly some people are handling this, meaning just mm -hmm. saying, forget <clears throat> it, just hanging out with people, still, you know, being social, gathering with people, having parties and stuff like that. And there's such a much larger camp of people that are like, man, we got a social distance and let's get through this so we mm -hmm. can get things going again, you know? So it is frustrating. But you, you brought up something like we, my wife and I were at the beginning, we're like, oh man, you know, all this downtime, yeah, it sucks, but it is what it is. Like, let's get all these projects at home done. So like, if you start a big project or a couple small projects, how many trips is that to Canadian Tire Home Depot? <laughs> like, know. that's a bunch. So I, we finally were like, like, not that we did a bunch of trips, but like, no, we can't do this because just automatically there's a bunch of trips to, to here and there. And, and I'm like, <sighs> we have to draw the line. So as much as I want to do the, all those little fixes that I never have time to do, like, no, you have to mentally just not do your best with what you have and, totally. and not make that extra, extra, even if it's one or two or three trips, like that's part of the issue here. You know what I mean? People are still, some people are get groceries every day type of people. So now they're getting groceries every day still, or every second day, or, you know, it's, it's not good enough. Yeah. Well, I should say it's not good enough. I don't like to me, I, 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 I really trying to do less. So, well, I think that's, uh, I think that's the only way that we can squat, like hammer this down, you know, is by yeah. not interacting because who knows who's carrying and who's not and who's got it and who doesn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's tough, man. I was, we, Jen and I were talking the other night about it, but it's hard because on a day to day, normally in normal life, before all this happened, you'd have breaks from your family, from your wife, from your, you know, whether it's running errands at night or it's going to work or the kids are going to school, you know, and now there's no breaks. So even for the kids and parents, you're, you're around each other all day for the most part. If you're at home or working from home, you've got one or two or three kids or four kids running around. Like it is 
it's fine and it's 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 great most of the time but it's a grind you know you don't have that that release of like being away for three four hours and doing your own thing you know unless you got a good you know depending on how you kind of set up with your wife or whatever but um so that's been one of the biggest things with me is there's days where i get really like i'm just cranky i'm just frustrated i'm just yeah. you know I'm, I'm easily irritated and it's not the kids fault they're just kids or being kids or having fun and that's that's what i've noticed is you gotta like i have to mentally check myself sometimes be like hey relax man like what are you pissed off yeah. about right now you know but i do get i will get frustrated and i will get like short at times yeah. just because you know you're not i'm not used no one's used to this i've never gone seven yeah. days like even on the weekends weekends are awesome you're with your family but you've got soccer you've got hockey you've got met you know you're going to be at the boys at night to play poker or something right there's something going on yeah. get nothing like yeah. you think about like, you know, we're all, everyone's busy. Right. But we got, you know, sessions at night that we're doing stuff on the ice with teams. You look at your schedule right now. Are you thinking your schedule? Like, what do I have? Like, sometimes I'll come in. I'm like, Oh, Jenna, what do you got going on tonight? Yeah. Like, Absolutely nothing for the next yeah. lots of nights, you know? So it's how like, often are you like, Oh, it's, it's, it's Thursday. Uh, this is where I'd be right now. This is who I'd be on the ice yeah. with right now. Or this is, you know, that's, this is Jenna's girls night. She, she, you know, it's whatever she, she's normally gone on this night. I, I'd have the kids tonight or yeah. like I do it all the time where this is where I should be right now, or this is where totally. I'm normally at this time of the week. Like or, crazy. But <laughs> with kids, are you, are you finding like some days are like smooth, you know, the kids are in a good mood and it's not that you're going anywhere, but you killed four hours oh, yeah. playing this game. And, and then other days are like, seem like forever. Oh, <laughs> are like, you going is it like, yeah. And like you're bang on, like some days they're we'll read books and we really try to limit screen time. And man, any parents yeah. out there that have their kids on devices a lot, don't work like as if man. And there's a lot of like cool stuff. We've found some good games that have mathematics and reading and all this <laughs> stuff in it that the kids have been playing, but they have their go-to games that they like to play. So they get like, try to give them like an hour of time during the day that they can play their games and stuff. And then we may yeah. use it a little bit. Uh, but to your point, like some days they'll, they'll be upstairs doing crafts or drawing for like an hour and then. They'll move to something else. They'll come play in the basement, just the two of them for two hours, just doing stuff, you know? And then other days, like I'm bored. Like I, and then just question after question after question. Those are the, the days <laughs> yeah. where you're just like, okay, you know, yeah. but I, at the same time, they're, they're young. I have young kids, so they're young and it is what it is, right? There's nothing that we could do to like, it's, it's they're, they're, they're doing their best. They're great. They're happy. So you know, they just kind of roll with it and, and figure it out, you know, but it's definitely like, yeah, yeah it's all the stuff that, like you said earlier, it's when no one's ever been through this before. So you have no idea what it's going to be like or how to deal with it. And mm. you just do the best you can. And, and I, the biggest thing I like is talking about this kind of stuff, because what do you see on Instagram? What do you see on social media posts of, Oh, we wrote rollerblading today for four hours. Oh, we went for a hike. Oh, we baked cookies. Yeah. You know, we didn't see the mom screaming in the background. Cause you know, yeah. just, right. Like and that happens. It's okay. You for know, but sure. it's like, it's not easy, man. It's not, yeah, there's a lot of really good moments. Don't get me wrong. A lot, a lot of fun stuff that we're doing. And and it is cool to like spend this much time with your kids. Um, but it's also, you know, there are some really shitty times and some really time, some times where you're going to have a short fuse, you're going to blow up and lose it, you know? So I it's, can, um, oh yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it is what it is. So right, so right now, instead of managing your employees 24 seven, you're just managing your kids. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know which one you, <laughs> I don't know which one's easier for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But going into like, this whole time management and getting stuff done and doing things, whatever. Um, we joked about this on social media a little bit, but you came to me like on a Thursday, I think it was in, in the morning said, Hey blazer, I'm doing that. So the backstory of this was I had read that. I'd read David Goggins book and, or listened to it. Cause I don't read, I was audio book in it, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. um, and it was an awesome book. And then I kind of got into him a little bit and he does this 48 hour challenge. So for anyone who doesn't know this 48 hour challenge, it was over 48 hours. So two consecutive days, you run every four hours. So four miles every four hours. And I remember bringing it in one day to you guys and talking to the guys at the, at the, at the uh, training center and being like, Hey man, this is like, check, listen to this challenge. Everyone was like, Holy man, that'd be so hard. And then we had talked about it on like, you know, kind of here and there a little bit over time. And then, uh, and then you called me and kind of had us. So where did we're like, why, why did you like, why, why did you want to do it that well, day? And, and we, how this all we were about? talking about it. We were like, you had probably brought it up. I don't know, six months ago. Or, or whatever I can't yeah, remember probably. but it was it was a, it was a while ago and we 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 had talked about it and, and then of course like I started following him on Instagram and I didn't know a lot about him until you mentioned him like he went on uh uh Rogan right yeah. that's I think that's where you where you heard him and, and I heard about him from you so I thought I just started looking around and then he was I don't know what it was but I said it was like going in waves like of hey I'm, I'm good to just chill out or I'm super ambitious right now so all of a sudden Thursday I, and I was thinking about it. I kept saying like, 
ever since this started, I'm like, next week, I'm going to do it. Next week, I'm going to do it. Next week, I'd throw a text out to you or we'd chat. I'd be like, you want to do it? And you're like, oh, man, I don't know. I don't know. And I was fully, I had already committed like, okay, next week. I'm going to do it next week. And then Thursday, I, it was like 11 o'clock maybe. And I it went downstairs. I got everything set up. Like I was doing Mitch's uh, sweat at home. Like I got my computer set up like to follow along the workout, you know, click, yeah. ha- picked out the workout that I wanted to do. And then I was going to go for, I was going to do the workout and then go for a run. And uh, I have a loop at my house that's like just a loop that's, I don't know, when I run, I just kind of keep it around five kilometers normally. And, uh, and all of a sudden I'm like, I'm doing it. I'm doing it this afternoon. Like if yeah. I'm going to run 5k, I'm, I'm kind of going on this loop every day, you know, every, every day, every second day. Anyway, I'm like, let's just do it. And I'm like, and we, cause we had been talking about it. I just, I called you right away. It was probably more like, I don't feel like working out right now. This just saying, <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm going to start at five o'clock. Like, you know, just push it all till later. So I was like, Blazer, I'm doing it like five o'clock today. You got a couple hours, you know, uh, I think, whatever you know if jenna's good with the kids which i'm sure she was I'm like come on do it and there's a part of me that was like what if he doesn't do it am i gonna follow through with this <laughs> and, but, but i was really hoping you were so uh but you kind of like were, were like i don't know but i i thought i thought that i heard in your voice I'm like maybe he's gonna do it so that was it it was it was probably just because i didn't want to work out i'm like i'm doing it right now like yeah i was i was actually in a bad mood that's that, that's probably the easy answer that was a long answer for me saying i was grumpy i was in a bad mood i was like if i'm ever going to be able to battle through this it's gonna be right now because i'm i'm kind of i'm kind of pissed yeah so uh so yeah that's that's how it happened for me and then and luckily you jumped on board and we texted a couple guys and they were like oh man good luck yeah um but uh you've got to give yeah, guys at least like four or five hours minimum to a couple days to well get most guys not not most guys you should be like hey you know next week let's do this let's yeah. let's start this whatever you i gave four hours and you were you were in <laughs> well and i end up you might be the only guy i know that yeah that would do that on a couple hours notice jenna was at work and uh because she was at the hospital so she was still working and um so i whatever i sent her a text i'm like hey we'll do this for dinner and uh, I'm gonna do a 24 hour run with Kevy, like running every four hours. And she just sort of—I can't remember exactly, but it was just like, okay, sounds good. I just like, and then she came home like, you cool with that? She's like, yeah, that's fine. Like no problem. And she was great. Like it wasn't a big deal. Yeah. It was you know every four hours. But so for people that kind of were following or that don't know, so basically we started at five o'clock that afternoon on Thursday. We ran at five o'clock, five k, and then nine o'clock at night, and then one o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning, nine o'clock in the morning. And then one o'clock in the afternoon and five o'clock in the afternoon. So any, any time kind of around that five any time around those hours, we'd go for a 5k run and, um, kind of going through it so real we quick. Dumbed, we dumbed it down. Cause that was yeah, yeah, the yeah. actual challenge was 48 hours. Right. So seven, we did 24 like miles, four miles, so seven kilometers, yeah. seven ish kilometers. And we, we brought it down to, to five, which I do not feel bad about. And I'm really, no. <laughs> I wouldn't have been able to, we talked about this like in social media. Like I, I would not have been able two extra kilometers at, at my at the pace I was going, which definitely was slower than you know if you're just running one, I, I that's probably about an extra four and a half to five minutes per kilometer. So an extra nine ten minutes per run would have made a big difference for me. Like, yeah, I don't know. No, that was I, I so, definitely yeah for sure. It was right this time. Um, but going through it, and this is one of the things that I we kind of mentioned as we were doing this is no matter what the challenge is, it could be walk a kilometer every five hours or ten hours. It doesn't matter what it is, but like just I found for that twenty four hours. <laughs> I was mesmerized by the time. I was mesmerized by those that next four oh, hours. Yeah. I was waiting for the clock. You know what I mean? I was still hanging with the kids. We were having lunch, da da da, whatever we were doing. But I was like that. I was just focused on that next run, that next run. Like I remember, I had all a bunch of clothes in the spare bathroom, like in the kids' bathroom. I yeah. had my shoes there, so I get up just like at one o'clock in the morning. I get up, go to the bathroom, get dressed in my stuff because it was still kind of chilly out, and then go downstairs and just run, and then come back to this and sweaty, jump in the shower quick, get out try to sleep for a couple hours and then do it again mm-hmm. and uh yeah. but go, going through it for you what was like so starting the first run's fine you're kind of happy like i was kind of pissed but then i got i was like okay this is cool uh and then going off from the first run to the second run i was like oh that's okay what was it like for you going through those i there were seven runs total but we don't have to go through every single one but what was it like kind yeah. of that peaks and valleys for you on it I was I was excited the first one. Like I don't. I, you said you were you were probably mad because I brought it up. And, no, and I was. You, and you you, yeah. you were like me. I, you can't say no. Like I honestly think you did it because you're like, 
I'm going to be mad if Kevin does this and, I, and I'm not part of it. That's probably, <laughs> that's probably that you're, I'm going to guess your biggest driving force, but I was excited. Like even my, 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 my pace was good. And so five o'clock, that's okay. I'm a big workout in the morning, run in the mor- like first half of the day. Even when I was like younger and playing, I hated working out in the afternoon. Yeah. So even running those, the nine o'clock, like 9 PM, uh, one and obviously 1 AM and even the 5 AM was a little early, but I was really worried about the, the 9 PM and the, and the 1 AM. So I was really excited for the 5 PM. Like, yeah, do this, you know, got home, had some dinner and hung out and then, and then obviously ran at nine, which again, I was like, still like, Oh, it's dark. Like this, I don't normally run in the dark. Like this is, this is all right. And then it was after that one where I was like, okay, where, what do I do? Like, do I, do I go to go to sleep? Like, what do I, what do I do now? So I, I hung out, you know, whatever we watched a little TV. My wife and I watched a little TV, like, I don't know what we did, played cards, whatever. And then, it, and then I didn't sleep. Like, I, I don't know what, you know, I've been trying to go to bed at a decent time through this whole thing, but I'm like, I, I can't go to bed right now. I'm, I don't think I'm going to feel better if I get an hour and a half, I go to bed at like 11 and get an hour and a half sleep. So I didn't, I just stayed up and watched the TV, tried to keep myself busy and then uh, went out at one o'clock. And that one, I thought the one o'clock, the 1 a.m. one was going to be the, the toughest one. And, and it, it wasn't, I, I felt okay by far the one I felt the worst on was the 5 a.m. Cause I got home. I was tired. Like you said, like, uh, physically started to feel a little bit sore, had a shower and then tried, couldn't sleep right away. Uh, but fell asleep for, I think it was about an hour and a half hour 45. And I really had a hard time getting up at like four, four thirty, four forty when I got up for that next run. Yeah. Yeah. And also, you, yeah. Same. Like, well, I didn't sleep well, so I I, sl- I went to bed. So and you stayed up from that nine o'clock run till the one o'clock run. I I ended up going to bed mm-hmm. and couldn't sleep. I was restless. It was brutal. Yeah. And then grinded through the one o'clock, which I was okay. Same thing. But I started to get sore. My lower back started to get a bit sore. My legs were starting to get a little bit sore by that point. But then what I noticed is that the five o'clock run, that one was tough too because I ended up probably getting an hour of sleep. Same thing. Like I was restless again after that mm-hmm. one o'clock run. It was tough. But then on that five o'clock. I realized that my body just kind of plateaued. Like I, after the five o'clock run, I wasn't more sore than I was before. And then to me, then that's when it kind of became more of a mental thing than a physical thing. So yeah, the one o'clock, five o'clock were mentally hard to get up for and be like, I'm really doing this, man. This is crazy. And then after that, the pain was there, like not crazy pain, just like lower back sore a bit. Legs are obviously sore. Calves are sore. Um, and then I was, yeah, after that, I was like, okay, now it's mentally just like, you're, this is what you're going to get. So stretch it out a bit and go. And yeah. so then the next nine, one and five were, were fine. The five o'clock in the afternoon, the last run was probably the one I was looking forward to the most by that point of just getting it done, you know, and like, let's like, let's do this type thing. Um, but it was, it, it was awesome. Like, and I'm, I really appreciate you like kind of dragging me to it. Cause it was, I'm really glad I did it. But you and I talked about this, but for anybody who's done any kind of challenge, and it could be anything, like trying to do 100 push-ups in an hour, like it's, you know, 100 push-ups in two hours, doesn't matter what it is. When Once you get it done, I think for you and I, we said this, like, wow, we actually did that. Like, that's pretty cool. And more so, like, not a lot of people would try to do 100 push-ups in an hour. So you're like, you know, you're doing something that not a lot of people are trying to do, or not a lot of people are trying to do 24 mm-hmm. hour of running you know, running whatever it was 35 kilometers in, in 24 hours. Like it's not a crazy number. People do cr- crazier things every day. Right now we're seeing people do way more monumental things than that. There's nothing, there's nothing yeah. heroic about this at all, but it was definitely something that got me out of my comfort zone for sure. And I, by the end of it, it was like, man, that was cool. It kind of accomplished something that was a little bit outside of my realm or a little bit outside of anything I've really done like that before. And I was, I was pumped. I was like, ah, oh, this is pretty cool, man. I agree. Uh, and I was the same way, not to, like you said, go through every run, but I was the same way you were. Once the once the 5 a.m. run hit, I was sore. I expected it to be a much bigger physical challenge than mental. Like yeah. I thought, thought my body, it's not built to run that much. And I thought I was just going to break down and be hobbling. And I think I, I, I agree. I got to like a point where I'm like, yeah, you're sore, but, but it's okay. The mental part of like, the big thing I heard you say earlier was like watching the clock. Yeah. Like, oh, two, two hours, I got to get dressed. Yeah. Uh, and you know, two hours and 15 minutes, I'm, I'm taken off again. Like that, yeah. that was what I was doing. And I was, you had kids, uh, like dealt with your kids. So I was, sometimes I'm like, maybe it was easier cause you were busy. Yeah, like, probably. You, you could pass an hour going to throw yeah. a ball around or, you know, take your daughter for bike ride, whatever. And, and, and for me, I was just, I was just sitting here, but then other times I'm like, I'm just sitting here just worrying about me and he's 
probably out riding a bike <laughs> or you yeah. know yeah. out out playing mini sticks or whatever he's doing. So I'm like, I don't know which one's worse, but uh, the mental battle uh, was so way harder than I thought. But I felt so good about bat- like battling through it and, and, and doing it. And you just don't don't get that many things in in our lives anymore that are like that physically or mentally demanding. Like we're still no. competitors. They don't don't make our money oh, being right. athletes or. But that's that's what we you know we grew up. How, how much of your life the first you know from the time you were whatever twelve thirteen you started playing high level hockey and you were what when you were you know twenty five when you were done thirty whatever it was yeah. when you were done playing you know yeah. and and uh, like playing for real and every day was just like every day was how you eating to get ready for practice or game every summer was how you getting ready for the next season so those like physical and mental battles i i not that i'm comparing this to like professional sports but just like i really enjoyed the the fight the yeah i i as much as i complained about it i i really enjoyed just battling through it mentally and being like oh this is this is kind of kind of cool just to shut off a lot of your other other things you should be doing and and just like worrying about this for 24 hours i agree man i think that i think i i totally agree i think the mental battle and like grinding through something i i really enjoyed that you know and um yeah i i would do something like that again for sure you know maybe for sure yeah and and, and what no matter what that challenge is like it, it i would i would try something you know that kind of pushes you a little bit as well and that's kind of my advice to anybody yeah. out there who's looking to maybe pass the time or maybe try to add a little something that maybe you wouldn't normally do, but look for stuff like this. And I think it, the one other thing that I, you and I talked about a little bit while we were doing this, it's a lot more fun to do it with somebody else. Like if you have a partner to Jeff, do it with, or Jeff, you have it, a buddy yeah. or a couple of buddies that want to do it, you know, the more the merrier. If you have a group of 10, 12, 15 that are going to do a, you know, I, I think of like the CrossFit community, they're doing stuff like this all the time with workouts and stuff and posting their times and what they're doing. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, 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 and but, the other thing too is, you know, by, talking to somebody else about it, or even by putting it out there a little bit of whether it's social media or an email to your family or friends, you're kind of keeping yourself accountable on it where For sure. I just told a bunch of people I'm doing this. I can't back out of one of these events or one of these runs or one of these, whatever. Right. So you kind of, you kind of keep yourself you know, accountable for doing it and finishing it and grinding through it basically. So I thought that was man, some too. of these, and it doesn't have to be crazy. Like what we did was, was definitely pretty intense, but man, we, you know, we're laughing at one of our buddies who his son just wants to, we go for bike rides all the time and we are texting them like, Hey, how many bike rides, you know, you've been on today. But like it could be, it could be some with your son or daughter. Like, Hey, yeah. we're going to ride around the block. Yeah. I mean, that takes five minutes. We're going to ride around the block from the time, you know, from 9am to 4pm. So, so we eat dinner that night, like let's every hour or every two hours, let's, let's ride our bikes around the block together, you yeah. know, and not the, but even doing whatever that's going to be seven or eight of those through the day, like, for your little guy or little girl that could something fun something to pass the time you know by the time you get dressed and actually ride your bike and put it away whatever there's 20 30 minutes whatever it takes total like you're killing a little bit of time you're having some fun you're you're teaching your kids maybe about being accountable hey no we said we're going to do this we're going to do it but it could be you know it's it's keeping someone else involved like you said you know maybe it's a, like you and i did it but even if it's your son daughter like it's it, it's something to pass the day totally Oh, exactly. And it could be anything. Like we have one buddy that's not, you know, not a runner, not maybe in the best shape ever, but he's, you know, I think he's gone 13 days in a row running, which is amazing. And I don't think they're like crazy long runs, but he's getting out there, you know, every day. And we all know, like some days you're like, yeah, I'm I'm in, this is great. I feel good. And there's other days that you're like, I don't want to do this, man. There's no way you feel way better after, but everyone goes through that. We're like, this is brutal. I I don't know. I don't want to work out today. I don't want to. And you push yourself to do it. Again, getting over that kind of mental part of it, you push yourself to do it, and now all of a sudden you're done. You're like, okay, I, f- I feel way better. I'm glad I did that, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just yeah, yeah, getting over that hump and, and trying to push through it. Um, okay, okay, let me ask you. So we did this Friday, sorry, Thursday, five p.m. Friday to five p.m. Have you worked out? Uh, have you worked out since? No, I rode the bike. Uh, the other, so just I have a stationary bike here at the house that I have had, had for a bit, but I rode that the other day. Um, and just stretch the bigs. I'm still actually sore. Like I'm going to probably work yeah. out today. Um, yeah. and I was contemplating maybe going for like a light jog at some point today or tomorrow, but I'm still like my lower back still sore, man. My legs are still sore. Yeah. So I'm just kind of like easing my way back into it, but uh, I'll yeah. try to get back into it as, you know, kind of hopefully today I'll, I'll get something in some kind of a workout in mm-hmm. today. But, uh, what about you? Have you done anything since? Uh, no, but no. today I, I will, yeah. um, 
today I'm going to, I'm going to try to try to get active and get a sweat today. But, uh, I, I was, I, you're probably still a little bit more sore than me. I've been really surprised at how, how I bounced back. Like I expected Saturday, obviously woke up and was very sore. Yeah. And then Sunday I was expected to be really sore, but even by Sunday, I, like I was walking. It didn't look like I, I was walking with a limp anymore on yeah, Sunday. Yeah. And, and so I felt, I felt, uh, I felt better. So oh, I should, I should get, I, I'm in one of my waves where I don't care about working out. <laughs> if it's 12 hours and I'll, I'll be texting you about yeah. how lazy I am and I'll be back into that. So it's cause it's but. cause we crushed like, you know, seven workouts in one day. So you're good for a week yeah. at least. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're good for a week. And how, how mentally, how easy is it just like after dinner, like, have ice cream or have a drumstick or cause you, you're, you were, ran a bunch for 24 hours. I'm like, well, yeah, I can have that. No problem. Yeah, I can have that. No problem. Yeah. Especially Friday, Saturday. Which are like <sighs> yeah. cheat days of cheat days, you know? And then, <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. So even on the Monday I woke up, I'm like, Oh man, like I gotta, yeah, this is I totally didn't care about what I ate or what I drank or what anything yeah. didn't matter. Everything was going down the hatch. And you um, probably did more harm to your body than every and than 100%. anything. Like that's it's not just, it, not healthy to do to your body. Just yeah. shock, like shock your system like that, and then crush a bunch of food and drinks that you probably shouldn't. So yeah, exactly. probably did more harm than anything. Yeah, so I'm in, I'm in I'm in a wor- worse position today than I was uh, on Thursday <laughs> for sure. You plucked your back sore. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally. Um, just quickly, I don't, I don't want, I kind of wanted to do just a bit of a short one today, just to kind of recap, uh, what was going, what went on, uh, with that challenge and stuff. But also, uh, the draft happened last weekend on Saturday and, uh, we're not to go in depth on the draft and, but for anyone who's aware or not aware, but there's the OHL draft, which is basically the 15 year olds. So playing minor midget. So 15 year olds in Ontario and, and the U S that uh, have an opportunity to get drafted to the OHL. So that happened online. There was no gatherings or like that, but it all happened online on Saturday morning. So it starts at like 9 a.m. till basically 4 p.m. It's a long day for some of the kids for sure, uh, but they go through all, every round. So first round first and then all, all the way through. Uh, but we, uh, we've we had the opportunity over the years to obviously have some kids that have gone high and kids that have been involved in our programs that have um, that have had an opportunity to get drafted, which is, which is really, really cool. So on Saturday, I think we all kind of check in and just to you know see what's going on and who's getting drafted where and what's going on uh, with the draft. So, um, but quickly we had a, we had a couple guys go high, obviously, which was awesome. A couple, one in the first, one in the second, one in the third uh, round, which is which is great. Um, but you have any any kind of things that popped off to you at all, Kev, during the draft or anything that like kind of stood out to you that was uh, any kind of highlights for you, I guess, as a as a coach or a guy who works with some of these young players or anybody that kind of popped off. And you're like, oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's fun. It's, it's fun. I actually, uh, every year I do the same thing. I'm like, I'll, I'll check it out, you know, later in the afternoon. And then two hours later, I'm clicking refresh every, every four <laughs> minutes, yeah. you know, to see who is picked, even though I, I really don't know most of the kids, like yeah, most of the kids, like I, I'll know some of the kids from, from the Alliance or, you know, we get the chance to work a little bit with, with some of the kids in uh, other kids in Ontario. So recognize some names, but really don't know many of them, but I, I am, very interested to see uh you know what teams are doing and even tendencies for like certain teams picking outside this area or outside even you know into into the states whatever but uh nothing nothing crazy i was really happy for for the guys that that we see regularly that that went um i'm i more get like short term it's really cool you know it's really exciting for for kids to get picked and it sucks for everything everybody has a, something with this whole issue that's going on right now that that makes it tough and it it sucks for kids that they don't get their most kids they get picked they have you know they're having a little get together and friends and family over and maybe if it's a close team that's close you know the drafts on saturday sunday they're they're driving to mississauga or wherever yeah. you know in town to to meet with the team and they're not getting to do that so i feel bad for those kids not not doing that but i'm more get interested on the on the kids that don't get picked like what are you doing you know what how are you know how are you like tough break but what are you, not that you're going to do anything today or tomorrow, but like, Hey, what, what does this mean for you? Yeah. You know, what, what are you going to do? What are you going to do next? So I'm, I'm very excited for the kids that got picked, obviously, especially ours, but those other kids, I didn't get picked. I didn't expect to get drafted and I, and I didn't So you were the same way. And now what are you going to, what are you going to do next? Cause there is so much hoopla over this draft for so many years uh, from coaches and parents and teams and, kids just because we live in these markets you know and everywhere you live there's a ohl team it's it's a it is very it's it's very cool and it's a feather in your cap but at the end of the day there's there's a lot more that goes into it there's a way bigger picture 
Yeah, I know. So I totally for agree. For you guys that didn't get drafted, what are you doing? And for you guys that did get drafted, you know, yeah. right now is a different circumstance. But okay, that's that's great. What what are you? What is it? I mean, unless you're one of the really really high picks, it doesn't mean that much. Yeah, it, like it it really doesn't. Well, and that's the one thing too. I think this is uh, an, an opportunity for parents and kids, obviously, to see how they see how they deal with this, see how they deal with this off school. So maybe they got drafted late rounds. Maybe they got drafted. You know, they were projected to go in the first or second round. They didn't get drafted until the fourth or fifth, so they're pissed. They're like, oh, this is brutal. I got screwed by all these teams. All right, that may be. But what are you going to do? You know, put the, let's put the work in. Let's let's get back at it. Let's figure out what our holes in our game are, and let's try to push to to try to get better and try to push, you know, to, to make that next jump or, or make that team that we want to make next year. And I think that's yeah. where I think it's a missed opportunity for a lot of parents and a lot of kids where it's the blame game. It's odds. Well, you know, they, they picked him. They should have picked me. Da, da, da. It's that coach knew this guy. And instead of looking in the mirror and saying, Hey, you know what? Like I, I got stuff I got to work on. I got to get better at this and this. Maybe I didn't, you know, if, you know, if you drop from second round to fifth round or you didn't get drafted, there's a lot of opportunities there that you probably had to impress that didn't happen. And obviously there's a reason why you dropped down in the draft or you didn't get drafted and that's okay. But if you can realize what those are and fix those holes and get better and keep working, then, you know, like to your point, let's see where everyone is in like four or five years rather than next year. Mm -hmm. Cause next year out of this whole draft, there might be 20 kids that maybe play in the OHL, maybe, you know, Hot. Right. And yeah. then, you know, maybe yeah. the next year there'll be more out of this draft, you know, after a year of, you know, maybe playing midget or playing junior, but yeah. not a lot of kids, a lot of kids will be in the same boat, whether you're drafted or not drafted, you're going to be playing, you know, major midget, or you're going to be playing junior B or mm-hmm. junior C or junior A. So, you know, what are you going to do? Like, what are you going to do this but off season and how hard are you going to work together? And if, you know? Yeah, I agree. And if you don't get dry, I understand you don't get the, you don't get the recognition today. You know, you don't get the, you know, throw on a half visor tomorrow and, and start going out to a, a skate and, and, and you don't get the Instagram post and says, thanks to all my friends and family, which is all very cool for those kids that, that get to do it. But in some cases you're better off. Like it's very cool getting drafted wherever 10th, 12th, 15th round. But let's say you're, you're a late pick. You might be better off for some kids not getting picked. Yeah. Like all of a sudden you go next year, you play major midget, you play junior C, junior B, whatever you play. And, and first of all, there's a major midget draft that it seems like somehow nobody knows about, yeah. uh, but you could get drafted there or you could just have a great season wherever you play. Yeah. And all of a sudden now you're, you're, you got four teams, you know, if you're yeah. drafted, you have to go to that team. If that team's a contender, you know, it's, they're pretty strong. They got 12 forwards coming back, 5D coming back. No, you know, not a lot of room for you. Or, or maybe you're an undrafted. So you, you know, you're tied to that team if you're drafted, if you're undrafted, you have a great year. Maybe you got four or five teams that are like, Oh, come to our rookie camp, come to our rookie camp. And you can go to, depending on the schedule, maybe you can go to two or three rookie camps and all three of those teams invite you to their main camp. Great. Now you can look and maybe you can only go to one main camp, but now you can look at what, what team you is the best fit, which team has the most players leaving or, you know, that, that, I don't know, maybe it's a geographic, whatever the decision is for your family, you can look at what team fits you the coaching style, which team seems the most interested. And maybe that's a, so there are, there are some positives to, you know, maybe positive is not the, the wrong word, but okay, we didn't get drafted. So now what are you going to do? Well, I want to get out. I want to get uh, an offer to, to go to every rookie camp next year. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, go make your team, whatever team you're going to go to now, and then be, be the best, you know, 16 year old on that team by Christmas, be on the top two lines and, and see you, if you want to play in the O get to the O. Because like yeah. you said, there's only there's only ten, twenty, whatever it is, kids your age playing in the playing major junior next year anyway. Yeah, it, it's probably not going to be you coming out of the eleventh round. Well, if you look so, at like you know uh, how many teams there are, there's you know twenty something teams in the O, whatever that is. There, but there's maybe one or two sixteen year olds that are playing playing. There might be more on the roster, but so you're looking at yeah, yeah probably twenty to forty kids max that'll be playing at sixteen years old or be on a roster. And I'm saying playing like third, fourth line, is that good? Is that bad? Is that good for their development? I'm not going to say it's terrible because they get to practice at that level every day and work out and stuff. But at the same time, like they're not playing, playing, you know, um, there's a couple, there's maybe fit, maybe 10 to 20 that are playing a, a role and playing, you know, as, as a 16 year old. Right. So mm-hmm. I think, yeah. And I think the biggest thing is like, how bad do you want it? And if you're, you know, going in next season saying, yeah, I'm going to make this team and I'm going to, I'm going to show, prove everyone wrong. That's, that's one thing, but you need the mindset to be able to do that. And you need to be like determined to like work harder than everybody else. And 
you know, be honest with yourself about what you need to work on. And that's the one thing I always come back to is what are the holes in your game? Because if you're if one of your holes in your game is is your shots not great or you're not physical enough or you don't play with enough grit, those are things you have to change because it's not going to help. You're not you're not, you're not going to get to the next level if, if there are big holes in your game, you know. And I think that's where kids and parents have to realize, okay, we need some help with this, you know. And maybe they got to go seek out some help. Um, and it could be like anywhere from the mental part of the game. Maybe they got to go seek out a sports psychologist that can help them on the mental side of the game. Maybe they got to seek out a skills coach that can help them with some skill work. But um, looking at that stuff and 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 figuring out what you need to work on, I think is huge. And then trying to fill you know fill those holes up and and then push to that next season and and beyond. And that's important. I I, I agree. It could be anything, but put your focus where it's gonna, you know, you're gonna have an outcome. Like putting your focus. And we know there's parents that are still or kids that are still like three four days later. Like I can't believe that guy got drafted. I can't believe it. That's a waste of time yeah. like there's no tr- no no reason to put any focus on on that put the focus on where what you said on on okay what are we going to do now yeah you know and and I, when i say right now i i say it with quotations because i i know that everyone thing's up in the air like you know when tryouts and sure. junior b and junior camps are but but when this gets going okay let's let's do as much as we can right now so that we're ready when those camps get those yeah. other camps get going because you probably yeah just just Use your time wisely, basically, and, totally. and don't 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 fill up your you or your kid's head with with a bunch of negative stuff. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more for sure. Um, and just kind of a quick shout out, but the, some of the kids that did get drafted, uh, Hunter Heat went in the mm-hmm. first round, Brady Stonehouse uh, went in the second round, and then Xander Vecchia went in the third, and then uh, Ryan Cooper went in the ninth. And mm-hmm. I don't know if there's anybody else that. Uh, that you can think of from school anyway, but there was, there was quite a few other kids like Dylan Rubrick went, I think in the third round, which was awesome. Um, he's a good kid. Uh, and then McConnell Barker obviously went in the first round, pretty high top five picks. So I think he was number four, which is yeah. great for him. Um, but yeah, there was a lot of, um, it was good. It was really, really good. There was a couple other kids from Elgin that got drafted, like beer got drafted mm-hmm. and a couple other ones, which was great. And, you know, and again, for the kids that didn't get drafted, you know, keep working hard, keep pushing and, and, uh, you know, kind of see, see where everything ends up when, when this is all kind of said and done, you know? Um, and some of those kids, I'm uh, happy for all of them. Uh, and I'm not going to, you know, uh, point them out by name, but some of them are high end. They've been high end for years and, and there was no, no surprise, you know, they're, they're first rounders. Maybe they, they moved from a fourth, uh, a top five pick to a top 10 pick, or maybe they moved from a second round to a first round. That's awesome. They're all high end. There's a couple of kids that like, maybe weren't even on the radar as much and they, and they got themselves up into the first couple rounds. And I, I love seeing that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love, I love seeing those guys that put in the time and the work and, and, and got, uh, got, you know, got bumped up a bunch of rounds. So I, uh, uh, I don't know about you, but I was, you know, sending a bunch of texts to kids and, and parents and said, Hey, you know, good for you guys. Congrats. Enjoy, enjoy this right now. And yeah, once we can get back to work, get back to work. But I, I love seeing those few kids that could, that could, you know, really, really earned their, their stripes over the last year or so. And they, they, they earned that recognition. Yeah, no, definitely, man, for sure. Cause it, it is cool. It's one of those things that they can always kind of say that, Hey, I was drafted in the O, which is mm-hmm. great. No matter what round it was, a lot of people for can't sure. say that, which is really cool. Yeah. Uh, but then yeah. it's also, okay, what's that next level? What's that next step that you're going to take, mm-hmm. whether you got drafted or not. And I think that's really important for, for these mm-hmm. young, for these young men and, and for their families to be like, okay, right, if we're going to, yeah. If we're all in on this, which you, you know, anybody who's looking at the draft and hoping to get drafted, you've been pretty all in and for ho- all in with hockey for a lot of years. You know, you're not playing double A and A and hoping to get drafted. You're playing double A AA or triple A and really, you know, spend a lot of time and a lot of money and a lot of, you know, of your energy trying to play at that higher level. So now that it does or doesn't happen the way you want it to in the O, you just shut it down or do you mm-hmm. say, okay, now we got to, we got to basically hedge our bet here and, double down and try to yeah. push a little harder, you know? And I think for yeah, parents too, cool. I think for parents, you gotta be honest about what type of kid you have too. Cause mm-hmm. there's a lot of kids that are just talented enough and good enough to play at a high level, but they don't really work hard enough. And they don't really have that drive. Well, are they going to make that jump to the even further? Maybe, maybe they're good enough to play in the O right. But you know, maybe not, you know, and, and mm-hmm. if they don't have that drive and that passion, that work ethic, no matter how much skill or talent they have, it's going to be really, really hard to keep moving that needle, you know? So I think for parents too, sometimes being honest about that and saying, ah, oh, you know what? He's not, just doesn't have that, that drive or that passion, mm-hmm. you know? But And it is, like you said, it's cool. Like I, my whole, everything I've been talking about is like, ah, oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you get drafted. Like, what are you going to do? It's cool. 
Like I, I wish I would have got drafted, you know, but back when we were, we were getting drafted, you actually went to a draft. Oh yeah. Uh, right. And, yeah. and, uh, I, I wasn't gonna draft, but I went with a, a buddy of mine who was, who got drafted, just a really good friend just to see it. It was cool. Like, it, you know, you walked up on stage and, or you walked down to your team, whatever it was back then, but it is cool. So yeah, I, I if you got drafted, congrats, man. It's, it's a very, very cool thing. I hope you, I hope you just build on it. And you don't get complacent, but it's really, really neat. And like you said, it's, it's not everyone's fit. Even if you get drafted is a good fit. Like both you and I went and, and played, uh, and in the NCAA, and I, even if I would have got drafted, I probably would have ended up doing that anyway. Yeah. It was just a better fit for me, and I wasn't, uh, you know, ready to play it at, in that league. Yeah. So, uh, probably would have turned out the same way, but, uh, still, it, it would have been, it would have been cool. Like, I, I went through my little, like, oh, this sucks, <laughs> even though I yeah. was expecting not to, not to, for it not to happen. But yeah, it's for all you guys that got drafted, it's, it's awesome. Congrats. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's very, very, it's a, it's a cool feather in your cap, like you said. Oh, totally, man. And we'll see what the next what the next chapter brings, right? Melissa, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. well, buddy, thanks a lot for checking in. And uh, yeah. we'll, um, we'll, uh, we'll be doing this for sure again. And I'm going to have a couple other guests on too. So I'm going to try to, um, mm-hmm. I'll try to tie. I When we did the one with Pat that'll be coming out here soon where we had like three of us, I liked it. It was kind of fun. It was something different. So maybe Fine, we'll yeah. try to set something like that up again as well. But we'll, uh, we'll definitely be in touch and uh, stay safe. Wash your hands. <laughs> see you, buddy. Good, <laughs> All right, man. Good. Good to see, good to see you. <laughs> yeah, you too. Right. <laughs> okay, talk yeah, later, bud. To kind of raise that bar. Uh, that extra gear, the first three steps. Huge strides in the performance that I might not be the player I am today.